All right, guys, here we go with part four of Lesbian Dating Chronicles. Yes, I know. I apologize. It has been an entire year and I'm just now getting through part four. But, you know, life happens and I apologize. But we're here now. So do me a favor before you do anything else. Please subscribe to my channel. Please hit the like button and also hit the notification button. If you do that, the next time I upload a new video, you will be notified of that video. The next series after this one, because this actually, this part four actually ties into the next series, which is Angel in Disguise. We'll jump right into part one of Angel in Disguise. So make sure you hit the notification button so you can be notified when I upload the next story. It is a doozy. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. So thanks for checking me out. Here goes part four. All right, y'all. It is time for Lesbian Dating Chronicles, the catfish story, part four, the final chapter. I know it's been a year, but we're going to get through this final part. I'm going to try to make it as brief as possible. So let's get right into it. Now, the last video, part three, of course, <clears throat> that video kind of highlighted the relationship between me and the other girl that kind of infiltrated the relationship. And um, she continued to harass me throughout the remainder of my time dealing with the catfish, like all the way up and through the time that her, the catfish and I stopped talking, she continued to harass me. And I don't know if harass is really the word, but it was like she just would not leave me alone. And it, it just became a lot. Um, so and I and I'm, I'm, I want to say that she could have been the reason why the relationship ended with the catfish, because a lot I was definitely still living my life. So after um, Sweet Heat, when she stood me up for Sweet Heat. Um, I, of course I was in my feelings. I was hurt. We didn't really talk after, you know, through the rest of the month of April, um, uh, into May. Um, and we, we just kind of separated through May and then she came back and she started, you know, feeding me the, the, all of the, the things to make me want to come back and, you know, getting into my head and telling me she loved me and wanting to be with me and all of the things to make me fall back into the routine of things with her. So then we're back on the phone every day, but I was still living my life at the time. Um, I was still going out and partying. All of these pictures that you see of me throughout this video were taken between um, May through October. Um, so, you know, I went to the LAP party, um, Memorial Day weekend. Um, I went to several parties over the summertime. I went to the beach, hung out at the beach. Like I definitely was living my life. I was going out on dates with people. I was trying to like not be consumed by this catfish relationship, which really had consumed my life for almost a year. I was trying to not be sucked into that situation where I was dedicating 24 hours a day to somebody who just would not give me the courtesy of meeting me. It was really frustrating. It was really hurtful to continue to be with somebody who just refused to make an effort. Um, so her birthday is in June. Of course, I have a thing for Gemini. I don't, I do not know why. Like I, attract them and we just can't seem to quite get it together for whatever reason we're super compatible until we just really aren't and it's the most frustrating thing because every single Gemini that I have dealt with it has ended um in some traumatic way <laughs> like it's just crazy so her birthday is the day after my daughter's birthday and my daughter was happy. This is my daughter's fifth birthday. So we're going to North Carolina. We're going to have a big party for her. But what I had planned to do for the catfish was come up there 
either the weekend before uh, we did my daughter's birthday or the weekend after we did my daughter's birthday. And what I, if I wasn't able to come to Connecticut to spend their birthday with her, I wanted to take her to Puerto Rico. Now, mind you, I work in a call center. I don't make very much money, but I was willing to do what I could do to show this person that I was really dedicated to the relationship. I just wasn't getting the same type of treatment or or courtesy back to me unfortunately so in true catfish style there is always an elaborate story as to why meeting up is not an option you know we've gone through the whole gamut of things of the reasons why we couldn't see each other why we couldn't video chat why she couldn't send me updated pictures why, you know, I couldn't come up there, why she couldn't come down here. There was always some new and improved reason why we just couldn't meet. And this new reason was that her father's house had caught on fire and she had to move all of her father's stuff out of the house. And she was going to be busy the whole week of her, the weekend and the week of her birthday. There was just going to be no time to spend it with me. So here's like a little video that I made for her, um, for her birthday, just kind of saying how I felt. Hey Pumpkin, it's um, Friday, it's Friday the 14th, I don't know, probably about 10 o'clock in the morning. I'm actually driving on my way to work and um, I could have, you know, typically called you and said, happy birthday, I decided to record a video. Of course, I like being on camera, so it would, it's more fitting for me. So, happy birthday, babe. I hope you enjoy your day. I hate that you're not getting to do what you really wanted to do, but um, I hope you enjoy your day anyway. All right? Peace out. Um, so, you know, I really felt bad, but I didn't quite believe her, but it was just like, Eh, okay, you know, I'm not going to dwell on it. I should be used to this. This is what she's been doing the whole entire time that we've been talking. So I'm not even going to take it personally. It's just like, whatever. As you can see, I continue to live my life. I continue to hang out and do my thing and not let it consume me. And in um, September, Right around, okay, so let me, I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead. So August, her brother is getting married and here's the invitation to the wedding. So she sent me a copy of the invitation to the wedding or to save the date for the wedding. And so I'm thinking, well, hell, I'll just come up there for the wedding and I can be your, your date for the wedding. Like that would be fun. I love weddings. So I'm, I proposed this idea like, hey, you know, how about I come up for the wedding? No, you know, it's only family that's going to be there. And besides that, I got to drive all the way to Chicago to pick my sister up and bring her back to um, Connecticut for the wedding. And I'm just not going to have time. And, you know, again, another elaborate story. So I'm just like, OK. And by the end, by August, end of August, we had really started to pull away from each other. I had started to kind of not dedicate as much time as I had previously to her and talking on the phone. It was, it was just, you know, it was kind of naturally pulling apart, but I wasn't ready to let go. Um, so September comes and I meet someone online because girls do not approach me in the real world. Lesbians do not, I don't know, like, when I say I can go anywhere, anytime, any place, and men are on my ass, but women ignore me completely. I can be in the club with all the rainbow stuff on, and I promise you, they will walk right past me. I don't know what it is, but I am not a lesbian magnet whatsoever. Online? Oh yeah, they, they are all about it. I can pull them all online, but in person, like out in the real world, doesn't happen. So mostly everybody that I have met has been from meeting them online. So I meet this girl online. She's from Ohio. And, um, you know, she's like 12 years younger than me. And I just was not interested in her at all. Like, 
I'm like, yeah, she's cute or whatever, but I'm I'm not really feeling her talking on the phone. She was just very immature. And I just wasn't really in that space at that time. Um, I just wasn't interested. So, but she was persistent, very persistent. She's like, I'm going to come down there. Let's hang out, whatever. So she comes down and we end up hanging out and, and going to, my friend was having a, um, was having a baby shower and I was hosting the baby shower. So I was doing all the, the games and everything at the baby shower. So she came with me to the baby shower, met all my friends, all my straight friends. Um, and it was cool. You know, we had a good time or whatever, but it was really a very innocent situation. Like, you know, I was trying to be, get into the mindset of maybe this could be something, but I was still really caught up with the catfish. I wasn't really ready to let that go. Um, but I think that the girl that was, that infiltrated the relationship between me and the catfish actually was relating, relaying information back to her about what I was doing. Um, and I was fairly honest. I mean, I wasn't like completely telling her everything because I didn't, I mean, it was just like at this point, you know, I've tried to like give you all access to me and it wasn't like, I don't know. It just felt like I was wasting my time. So at this point I started to kind of not tell her everything. I, I was giving her need to know information and she gets pissed off because the girl comes from Ohio and stays with me. And I don't tell her that she's staying with me. Initially, she was supposed to stay with somebody else and something happened. I don't necessarily believe that was really the story. I think that's the story she told me so she could actually just stay at my house. But that's a whole nother situation. So she ends up staying with me. And because I did not say that initially, that meant that I was lying to her. And I'm really not that type of person. I'm fairly open about things. And if I tell you it's because, you know, sometimes I don't say things, not because I'm trying to be sneaky. I just don't deem it relevant or important. So I leave it out. But she felt like that was a complete, um, lie and that now she cannot trust me. And I was not, if, if I would lie to her about something that I wasn't worth being friends with her. And so these, if you start to read, you probably have to pause to read these emails. So it starts in October, like the, the end of September, but into October where we, you know, I'm emailing her, I'm begging and pleading and pleading my case. And I don't understand. I love you. I, I you know, I don't want to do this. Like, let's just keep trying. And she is just not having it. She is done with me. She doesn't want any, anything else to do with me. She's like, leave me alone. Stop texting me. Stop emailing me. And one day, um, so the girl from Ohio had gone back home and then she came back down and, um, I'm on my way to work and she's like, I'm crying. I had been crying since the night before. And she was just like, yo, what can I do to help you? Because you got to get over this situation. Like you've literally been catfished for a year and you're still crying about this girl. Like we got to, let me find out who this person is. So she, she's like, give me all the information in true catfish style. It was like having Neve in my house. She says, give me everything you have, phone numbers, email, pictures, um, her mama's name, give me every piece of information that you have. So I gave her everything that I had. And when, by the time I got home from work, she had found out everything. She had found her mom's Facebook page, uh, found her sister's Facebook page, I mean everything. And what we found was the pictures from the wedding, from her brother's wedding. And here is the picture of what she looked like based on the pictures of what she sent me. Now, I am not, I don't discriminate. I have dated all types of people, big, small, short, tall, um, heavy, not heavy, you know, I, I'm not, I don't really necessarily discriminate on that. I'm a fairly open person because I'm, I like personality. So I don't necessarily get caught up in the way people look, right? It's not that serious to me, but this is like not, you know, there's a big difference here. You know, it's like, you know, 
Yeah. And, and the thing about it is when I go back over the conversations that we were having previously, she was talking about how um, she was working on losing weight and I was trying to help her out. I was giving her different recipes to try and different exercises that she can do and different remedies and things that she can, you know, try to include into her, her life and into her diet to help her on her weight loss journey. I didn't know how big or small she was because Again, these pictures that she's sending me are all old pictures. So I don't know what she looks like right now, you know, um, but I wouldn't have felt any type of way. And maybe she was self-conscious about how she looked because I was so, you know, she was constantly asking me for pictures and videos. And there's a lot of things that I cannot post um, that I was sending her. Um, but you know, I'm not, I've, I've never been big. Like the only time that I've ever been over a certain weight was when I was pregnant with both of my children. So I've never been, I don't know what, what that, what that, you know, I don't know that life. So I don't know if that was the reason why she, she felt like she couldn't really show me who she was, but she allegedly told the girl that, had infiltrated our relationship that she had every intentions on catfishing me. And I just didn't understand that. Like, what would be the point of you sitting on the phone with me for 24 hours a day, falling asleep, getting up in the morning, staying on the phone, like literally we're on the phone for 24 hours a day. What was the point of doing that every single day? Like dedicating all day to someone, you know, for months, why would somebody do that? Like to me, that makes no sense, but apparently she thought it was funny. I don't understand that thought process. And even when I watch the show Catfish, I'm still just like, what kind, I mean, you really have to have some really low self-esteem to waste your time like that. Like you literally have nothing else going on in your life. Now, I won't say that I was innocent in the situation. I was, like I said, I was definitely living my life. I was doing my thing. I was going out on dates towards the end because I had gotten fed up. I mean, it was just like, it was so many excuses. It was so many lies and, you know, just the iron, the irony of her calling me a liar was just, you know, it was, it was beyond, but yeah, the end comes when I find, you know, I find the picture and, you know, my friend from Ohio says, yo, I'm going to post this on Instagram and we're going to, we're going to out this catfish for being a catfish. And she did. And so I sent her the email said, Hey, you know, she posted this and this is what happened. And she's like, fuck you. And I said, okay. And my email was not received. She had blocked me on everything. And that was the end. Um, so the person, of course, that saved me from the catfish, the founder and, and kind of was like, okay, it's time for you to let go. This is the person who ended up being my next saga. <laughs> so the next series is going to be Angel in Disguise. And it's going to tell the story of how we went from, you know, her saving me from the catfish to me, you know, yeah, you'll just have to stay tuned. So make sure you do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button, like the video, comment on the video, tell me what you think. I'm always up for suggestions. So thanks for tuning in to Lesbian Dating Chronicles, The Catfish Story, the final chapter. And uh, we'll see you for Angel in Disguise.